Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, too. Oh, boy, blah, 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 Hello, this is Andrew Cross, Cum DJ, on the Cum DJ Music Show. And hopefully, I'll now be talking to Mandy Perkins of, of Verona. Are you there, Mandy? Yes, I am. Hi. Yes. Hiya, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? Yes, very well, thank you. So, uh, where am I calling you now? You're actually in L.A. or California? I am in Los Angeles, ah. um, Santa Monica to be exact. Cool. Where um, are you exactly? Uh, South Wales, uh, in the UK, near Cardiff. Cardiff is the capital city of Wales. Have you heard of Cardiff? Of course I have. And yeah. you know, we just we just did um, a tour of some of the UK a few months ago. Right. And we did not get to come to Wales. But next time we um, get over there, we're definitely going to have to make it. Because I've heard it's beautiful, and the accent's awesome, and <laughs> it sounds lovely. Thank so. you. Yes, uh, well... Definitely come to Wales. Uh, we'd be happy to have you here and to hear your uh, live shows. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, our live show is very trippy. I think you would dig it. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> Excellent. Right, okay, so before we play the first song, uh, of Verona, you met uh, Dylan Pace, is that correct, in early 2010? We did. We met in early 2010. And um, we were working on some other projects. I got called in to... I, I do some outside writing also. Okay. Um, besides doing my artist stuff. And we started writing. And we realized that the music we were writing for other people actually didn't sound like anyone else. Yeah. And we decided to form a project for all the new music. So that's how we initially formed of Verona. Okay. And then a third member joined. Uh, Jeff... How do you pronounce his second name? Sojka? Jeff Soika. Soika, right, okay. Yeah, but, but how did you just say it? Because I kind of like that. <laughs> Sojka. Sojka. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to go by Sojka from now on. Jeff Sojka. Fair enough. Um, we, met Fair him, enough. we met him. He was engineering and doing some mixing for another producer, and we happened to go in there okay. and heard him drum. And we were just like, dude you need to be in a band with us. <laughs> so we've been together ever since. And did he take much persuasion or did he jump at the chance? I'm pretty, you know, I, he seems pretty into it. Cool. We're doing, we're doing something a little different. So if you're, I guess if you're a musician that thinks a little, that wants to do new things and um, really break the genres, yeah. genre barriers, it would be like a fun project. Well, so yeah. he seemed into it. The album, The White Apple, certainly breaks genres. It's a pretty special album. And Thank you. No problem. And we're going to play a song from it now, the first one of three. And the song I've chosen to start with is a song called Unique in Its Madness. Uh, okay. Uh, what's this one about? Can you give us a general overview? Um, well, Unique in Its Madness is about the you just like the first time you realize that you really really like someone yeah and it makes no sense <laughs> but you can't you just can't stop so it's it's actually the album in an, in an entirety yeah if you like listen from beginning to end all the songs flow into each other that's right and hopefully when people listen to the album they'll see but that song sits in the middle of the album yeah and it's supposed to be the breakthrough of when you let go and realize you like someone Cool, okay, let's hear it. This is unique in its madness.
That was a brilliant of Verona there with Unique in Its Madness. And I'm talking to Mandy Perkins, lead singer of aforementioned bands. How are you, Mandy? Still there? I'm, I'm so good. I'm so good. Is it you singing the BRFM? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a professionally made jingle. It's not me. It's not me. <laughs> <I thought. laughs> that would have been amazing. <laughs> my, my voice is nowhere near that good, I can tell you that now. But, uh, well, you have a good speaking voice, so... Thank you. Thank that, you. That, that, that's good. Uh, I wonder how many people in California have heard the, uh, you know, the Valley's accent quite so thick as mine, if you know what I mean. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but your accent is actually Canadian, is that right? You were born in Toronto, Canada? I was. And I um, went to school there. And then for college, I came out to California. Okay. And I studied English Lit. And then I wanted to come to L.A., to, um, I always wanted to be a singer, but I also also wanted to go to law school, yeah. which is pretty random, I know, but I really like school. <laughs> so I moved to L.A., and I did law school and music simultaneously, and right after I passed the bar exam, I got a record deal cool. as a solo artist. So I never practiced, <laughs> but I am licensed. Excellent. And you released uh, three EPs as a solo artist, yeah? Uh, Actually, I didn't. You yeah. know what's weird? Go on. I released one. I released one EP. I, I really I put out demos right. on a site called CD Baby. <laughs> I, I you know my first demos ever. I mean I'm talking demo demos. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was in 2003, but it, it wasn't like an EP or, or a release or anything. It was literally the first songs I ever made in my life. <laughs> and for some reason they're listed as these like releases. Yeah, yeah. I just hope people don't go back and listen to those and say, gee, <laughs> that Manny Perkins sure has an, has an awesome EP when she first started. Because it wasn't. It was, it was, it was you know, literally sketches of songs. So I released, I released one EP as a solo artist, and I released one album. Yeah. And the album, is that, uh, was when you were signed with Sony, is that right? Or was that before? Well, actually, I, um, I made an album... The, the, uh, this is the same album, but I made an album called Movie in the Line. Yeah. And Sony bought that album, and I turned, I switched it over to Alice in No Man's Land. Okay. But before I could release Alice in No Man's Land to a massive release, yeah. unfortunately, as of so many people in the industry suffer, um, my everyone on my label got fired. So my la I actually couldn't release that album. I only could release it digitally. And for a, for a little while, I was on that label with no, there was no label. So that was unfortunate with that record. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons I decided to start a band a year later is because I couldn't, you know, really do music under my own name for a while because I was on a label with no label. Yeah. And then I thought, you know what? I don't ever want to have my own name stuck again and not have that ability to, you know, be be who I am and do what I want to do without politics getting in the way. Yes. And then also yes. I ended up meeting Dylan. So the band thing just happened. But, um, yeah, so I guess I've actually not released 
I mean, I guess I released a number one album and an EP here and a demo here. But there's we're, we're, next album, Andrew. Yeah. Huge, huge album. Huge album. <laughs> we're going all the way with the next one. <laughs> what? Is there going to be another of Verona album soon then, or is it in the pipeline? I have written probably 100 pages of material so wow. far. Yeah. So I'm definitely. We just released a deluxe version of our um, debut album. The debut album came out last year called The White Apple, and then we just released The White Apple Deluxe like a week ago. Yeah. That has five bonus tracks, and most of those tracks are on TV shows um, this summer yeah. and fall. So we added those on, so when people heard them on TV, they would be able to go get them. Excellent. So did you uh, write those songs for TV, or did they, to the TV shows actually pick them up? Some of those songs we actually wrote for TV. Oh, cool, cool. So it was, it was more of um, some kind of... Our songs are very visual anyway. They yes. are, you know, just in and of themselves. Because Dylan and I um, are very... I guess we're very vu- visual um, music tellers. But um, we a couple of them we were specifically asked to write for TV shows. Right. So they're even more so, this, this batch. So these producers were obviously fans and thought, let's get them to you know write a good song for our show which is a, a big yep. compliment really yeah and you know one of the shows that's in um mtv i think they definitely get it in the uk but it's it's called teen wolf it's on mtv yeah we've heard and of teen wolf in britain yeah good show good show i mean it's it just it's a fun of um you know teenagers and college kids which is awesome because we really you know well, well doing it for both so 21 so it's definitely that Right, okay. The line has gone a bit the line has got a bit wonky there. So I'm gonna play the yeah, the line's gone a bit funny there. So I'm gonna uh, play the next track now, Raining, which is obviously off the white apple. Uh, and then I'll call you back. Hopefully the line will be uh, okay then and we'll carry on with the chat after the next track raining which is a a fantastic ballad fair play
This is Andrew Cross on BRFM. You're listening to the Come DJ Music Show. And I'm playing music of and chatting to of Verona. The lead singer is Mandy Perkins. And she's on the line now, I hope. Are you there, Mandy? I am. I'm back. Excellent. Excellent. I can hear your voice clear now. You've. Do you know what a Dalek is uh, from Doctor Who? Um, uh, a wi- a which one? <laughs> a Dalek is like a a character on a sci-fi show in Britain called the Daleks. They have strange voices. That's why you started to sound like this. There was obviously a problem with the phone, but uh, now we've called back. It sounds perfect. So you, uh, so right. we're, b- we're back I'm in the Google room. That, it? Yeah, Google Dalek. D-A-L-E-K. Dalek. Okay, I will. Dalek. <laughs> yeah, cool. Right, so the name of Verona, fairly obvious, but uh, where did that name come from? It's from the um, play Two Gentlemen of Verona, obviously Shakespeare play. Yeah. And I was an English lit major. Yes. And can you still hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, good. And um, when we, it was the first play we studied, and it's the smallest Shakespeare play. Yeah. But it survived against Taming of the Shrew and Macbeth and all the big plays on the virtue of its story. Yeah. So I thought if I ever had a band, it would survive on the musicality of everyone as opposed to like any kind of big machine pulling strings so we would be of Verona so cool. that's how that happens nice one and before the White Art will you release the EP Four Like Roses in 2011 yeah yes uh, and then after that you had some high praise MTV Buzzworthy said you were one to watch and Hitch, Hits magazine featured you as one of the top five acts to break so how did you feel getting right. such great praise with your first offering if you know what I mean I mean, it's pretty cool. Um, sometimes you do stuff for a long time before um, anyone gets, you know, anyone notices, but you keep doing what you do. And sometimes you do stuff and people notice right away. Yeah. And, I mean, either way, you're going to make the music that you make. But it felt pretty awesome. We realized that we were doing something really cool when literally, like, the first song we put out when we became a band, it just got so much attention. And we've been so fortunate because... Um, you know, our music is kind of commercially indie, yeah. so it kind of runs in its own lane. It's not super pop, it's not super glittery, but it's not totally indie. And um, we've been so fortunate that people have been accepting of this kind of music because it doesn't sound like anything else, and it's hard to describe. It's such an amalgamation of genres. Yeah, so we didn't want to bend it to fit in a lane. We just wanted to make the music we wanted to make, and we feel grateful. It crosses over well because I'm a I'm an indie fan, really. I like bands like the National, you know, Saint Vincent, who I've just played, and you know right. this this music I can get type of thing. But I can also understand how people that's into pop would like it as well. So you know, was this a conscious effort, or is 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 it, is it just uh, you know just come out like this? You know, I think it just pretty much came out like that. I, um, you know, Dylan is very, uh, Dylan and I are both heavily influenced by the 60s and 70s. Right. So we have that kind of like psychedelia art pop of like the Pink Boy. He loves Bowie. And then he also <laughs> loves bands like Garbage oh, yes. and um, um, Nirvana. And so it's got it's got kind of that little, little bit of grungy dirtiness, yes. um, that little bit of sparkle and then it definitely I think it appeals to both indie and pop because it it has equal parts of them both but they're completely un- unintentionally done like that yeah take, so it's like authentic take I think it's I think it's an authentic record take me is very rocky isn't it you know what I mean that's uh, that is quite a heavy track really the uh, track number five take me that's uh, you can yeah. see that one be played on like rock stations, if you know what I mean. Whereas like a ballad like Raining yeah. would fit in lovely on a commercial uh, station as well. So it's a superb blend. Was yeah, it a- and also it's the mood you're in too. I mean, yeah. you know, 
I was very, very, very angry when we wrote Taste Me. So, <laughs> and I was very sad when we wrote Raining. Very, yeah, very sad. I can imagine. So. Was it a conscious effort to make every song excellent? Because the standard doesn't die down at all through the White Apple. Sorry, I'm talking about the White Apple now. The album, you know, every, all 12 tracks are all top-notch. Was it a conscious effort? Let's make every song great. Let's not have any fillers as such. Well, first of all, thank you so much for saying that. That's the nicest thing ever. No problem. And that's awesome. <laughs> so thank you for saying that. Um, you know, we, we're both, um, Dylan especially, we're just very picky. Yeah. And I have to be honest with you, a lot of those songs are the demo, are, are the songs like Fog Roses. Yeah. It's six and a half minutes. It was written in six and a half minutes, <laughs> sung in six and a half minutes. And exactly what you hear is what we wrote. The same with Castles. A lot of the songs we couldn't go back to. Yeah. And we do even if we tried. So it, it really, we didn't actually, we really tried to only put on the record exactly what the record required. And also, all the songs go into each other. The, the whole song is, it's not a theme album, but, you know, I had, um, you know, a, a lot of, I had a lot of difficulties. I had some um, family um, issues during the making of the album. Right. And the chronology of, you know, from beginning to end of that also is just like, we just wanted, we just wanted to make it as good as we could. We just wanted to make the best music we could. And Dylan and I are just, we just are as our own selves. I'm so picky with lyrics. He's so picky with music. That yeah. we weren't we weren't going to let any crap go in there <laughs> just to put crap in there. We didn't make an album to be, to because we had to make one. We made one because we had stuff to say and it just came out. So yeah. I am so glad. I'm so appreciative that you said that. That's beautiful because it took two years. Yeah. And yeah. So well, thank you. Well, this next question you more or less answered, but uh, the lyrics are mainly about heartbreak. It's a lot of heartbreak, and is this is coming from personal experience really, or? Are, are you writing as a character for some of the songs, you know what I mean? Well, no, I mean, sometimes I do get stuff, you know, from the people around me, but, um, my, you know, my brother was, unfortunately, my brother, who was my best friend, got um, really sick. Right when I met Dylan, he got really sick, and yeah. unfortunately he passed away oh, no. right when the album, we finished the album. Okay. So he was sick throughout the whole, you know, throughout the album, so... Oh, and a lot of a lot of that is about you know, and one of my best friends, um, which I'll tell you, which I'll tell you about the white apples about after. But um, her her mom passed away during the album. My best friend's mom passed away. Right. So the whole thing is kind of about loss and realizing like what's illusion and what isn't, and being able to get over that, and dealing basically dealing with reality as it is, and understanding the difference between what is illusion and what is real and I think it's it's an album I think people will find the White Apple album yeah. when they need it yeah. that's what I that, that's what I hope I hope people understand that it's a lot of it's taken from a dark place and we we try to turn it into light kind of like a dark cloud with silver lining and I think it's an album that people will find because it is so real and it's an album I had to make because I didn't know yeah you know, I was so sad I didn't know what else to do I think people will get, you know, get that from it. That's what I hope, anyway. So, one of the tracks. It we, is. It is very real. One of the tracks. We are not alone here. Is a bit like that. That's uh, that builds you up into a state of hope. You know what I mean? It's such a beautiful, emotional yeah. song. I love that track. Well, I love them all, but uh, I could pick any of them really. To be fair. Right. Okay. Um, we're coming to the end of our chat. So obviously, you've got a website, www.ofverona.com. And there's links on there where you can buy all the music, is that correct? Um, yes, you can buy all the music and um, you can also, we have a Twitter. Yeah. So if you want to come and kick it with us on there, that's Twitter slash of Verona. Cool. And you've got over 70,000 followers, which is great. Yeah, we have, oh, we have, our, our, the people on Twitter are amazing. <laughs> and there's a lot of people in the UK. There's Good. There's a lot of people from the UK, so... Um, yeah, we got good taste in music, haven't we? So it's bound, we're bound to be following you, Jeremy. You guys totally know the good music. You yeah. have the good music. <laughs> it comes from there. 
I mean, so much of the music that we love as a band is just originates from the area that you're in. Yeah. Um, just a different, a little different mentality. There is, your top 40 is like, it could be anything. It's just things people love. And here, you, it's more about fitting into a box. Yeah, fair enough. And so, yeah, we're, we, we love the UK. Cannot wait to come, cannot wait to come to Wales and visit <laughs> BRFM Radio. Yeah, come and play live. Anytime you, anytime you want to come, <laughs> you don't want a picture of me. I'll trust me, you put everywhere. You don't want a picture of me. You want to sell your records, not put people <laughs> off. Right? Okay. You know, I'm going to make it a mission <laughs> to get a picture of you now. Fair enough. One day we'll have a picture together. That will be like Beauty yeah. and the Beast, if you know what I mean. I don't know if you remember that. Well, uh, remember oh. that series? But uh, right, you've got a few gigs lined up in New York in October. Yeah, it's just for your uh, American fans. Uh, the third yes, and do. October the fourth. Where in New York is that? Um, we have a show at Arlene's Grocery in Manhattan. At um, it's an early show at seven thirty on October third, and then oh. we have a Red Bull um, Knitting Factory Brooklyn show on October fourth at midnight. Oh, so brilliant. if you come out early, you come out late, and you're in New York, I hope that you come. And we will be in the UK as soon as physically possible excellent and if you don't come to Wales I'll come and uh, hunt you down you've got to come and play in Wales okay Cardiff come to Cardiff no we will we will we can't <laughs> we can't skip Wales excellent okay all that's left to say is thanks for joining me uh, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you uh, hope you enjoyed it oh uh, I had a great time thank you so much for having me on and thank you on behalf of the band too for being so supportive it's an um, absolute I can't pleasure. wait to hear your album too. So yeah, thank well, you. when that comes out, please uh, come back and we'll have another chat and we'll uh, play tracks from that album as well, yeah? For sure. Brilliant. Okay, thank you very much. And the last song I'm going to play of yourselves is The White Apple. This is an epic song, builds up nicely. So, can you give us a quick description or quick, you know, a description of what the song's about? The White Apple is the title track, obviously, to the record. And this is about my best friend um, who's, you know, unfortunately her mom passed away and I kind of lost her right. for a couple weeks, um, maybe a month. And she was doing all crazy kind of things. She went on a trip. And this is about the time between when she left and when I found her again. Okay, that's beautiful. Thank you very much for joining me, Mandy. This is The White Apple. Go and buy the White Apple, the album. Everybody that's listening is brilliant. Trust me on that one.
Again. 